What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Prometheus Rex, and today we are going to talk about NFL Fantasy Week 4 Best and Worst Matchups. Now, for those of you who have been playing fantasy football for the previous three weeks, I know that it's been a very interesting start to the season with injuries, and uh, there's been a few surprises with some players just absolutely killing it and completely unexpected like Juwan Jennings this past week. And I wanted to show some of my uh, uh, picks for players that I have on my rosters in different leagues, and I wanted to talk about the best and worst matchups this week. So, let's get into it. So, first off, I want to say that I'm going to go with the best for each position, the best matchup for East position and the worst for each position but I will have some sleeper options if you don't have these players totally fine this is just to help whoever's got these guys this week and the sleepers I trust them and I like them too so let's get into it okay so first off we have Kyler Murray he is facing the Washington defense the commanders who is ranked 32nd against quarterbacks so this is like literally the most opportune uh, matchup this week as far as for quarterbacks. And I put here his previous uh, fantasy points, which is 14.18, uh, 29, 54, .54, and 14.78. So as you can see, based upon the matchup, those 14s were against uh, tougher opponents and obviously against the the Rams, which their defense struggled against Kyler Murray because they don't have Aaron Donald anymore, uh, he absolutely lit them up. And so I would definitely start him if you have him in any of uh, your leagues. I think he's definitely your best option because it literally couldn't get any better against Washington's defense. Uh, so next, Saquon Barkley against the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneer defense. Now this one... Some people might be like, oh, it's so obvious. Just you're saying start Saquon Barkley. You know, obviously he's been killing it. Well, here's why I'm saying this is because uh, it's official. Devontae Smith has been rolled out and they're going to lean much heavier on the run game. And I also uh, am not sure about AJ Brown at this point as when I'm Filming this video, he's questionable, but it could go either way. And either way, I think Saquon's going to have a big game. This Tampa Bay is ranked number 29 versus running back, so I think he's going to feast. As you can see, he's already been feasting. He hasn't gotten below 17 fantasy points yet, so definitely start him. Uh, as far as wide receivers go, Marvin Harrison Jr., again against the Washington defense. They're... 32nd against quarterback and wide receivers, dead last. So, uh, and obviously, we know that the chemistry game for uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. and uh, Kyler Murray has only improved as he had that dud for the first game. But since then, he hasn't gotten below 17 fantasy points either. He's a big target in the red zone. He's a deep target. So if you got him, start him this week. Next up is uh, tight end. So Dalton Kincaid, who I have uh, in one of my leagues, is, and by the way, I have Kyler Murray, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Saquon Barkley in all of these leagues. Uh, but Dalton Kincaid versus the Baltimore defense, ranked 31st versus tight end. So I definitely would start him because he's gotten progressively better. His chemistry with Josh Allen just seems to get better and better red zone threat and he just keeps getting better and better fantasy points josh allen's getting in more of a groove with him so if you have him start him this week as far as defenses go this might be a little bit of a surprise but uh based off of the news today against uh the browns are facing the raiders and the raiders will not have either max crosby or Devonte adams this week so they're going to be a shell of themselves offensively and defensively. But in this case, uh, Las Vegas' offense is ranked 27th against defenses. 
So this is a very good uh, matchup. And I definitely think that uh, the Browns, it's a safe point. They haven't gone in the negative. It's a safe defense to play. So if you got them, feel free to start them this week. It's a safe pick, but it's also could end up being very lucrative this week. As far as uh, sleeper quarterbacks, I would say Brock Purdy. We saw what he did last week without Debo Samuel and George Kittle. And he put up some serious numbers. Again, I know it was the Rams defense, but he still put up numbers. His chemistry is spot on with Juwan Jennings starting. Andy Dalton. This one is a little bit of a gamble, but he definitely is a sleeper pick because he did something that no one in the league has done so far with uh, scoring with three touchdowns in a game, and they really surprised the Raiders. That offense looks completely revived with Andy Dalton versus Bryce Young. So I'm curious to see what he's going to do this week. Uh, If you don't have another good option, consider Andy Dalton. Uh, Now, as far as running backs go, Brian Robinson Jr. is going to have the full backfield for this game because Austin Eckler has been rolled out. So start him if you have him. And Zach Moss has been quietly getting some serious fantasy points. So I definitely think you should uh, start him this week. He's got a good matchup. So uh, as far as wide receivers, Nico Collins, it's he he's just he's just such a good wide receiver fantasy wise. He is the go to target for CJ in a lot of these situations where you need to just get points. And he's super reliable. He kind of reminds me a little bit of how Keenan Allen was for Justin Herbert, uh, where he just he was his go-to guy. You knew if you threw it to him, he was more than likely going to catch it. So Nico Collins. Uh, DJ Moore is facing the Rams defense, which is very opportune this week. Caleb Williams uh, is improving, and he's getting more comfortable throwing to his weapons. I think that... Uh, DJ Moore is going to score some fantasy points this week. So start him if you have him. Uh, Cole Komet and Pat Fryermuth. Uh, Cole Komet had a very good uh, game for tight ends uh, last week. So I'm confident that he will uh, be more and more involved in the offense as this goes on, as the season goes on. Pat Fryermuth, he just seems to be picking it up. This is, again more of a safe pick where if you don't have anyone else he's more likely to be safe than a dud fantasy wise so start him Uh, again dallas goddard i added him here because he had a huge game and he also is going to be a big target without potentially the top two wide receivers for the eagles we know for sure about Devontae smith and clearly Jalen Hurts trusts him after seeing last game, and they've played with each other for a few years now, so definitely start him. Uh, as far as uh, defenses go, the Dolphins and the Niners have really good matchups this week. I know that it might seem a little risky with the Dolphins, but Will Levis has been very good at throwing the ball to the other team this year, so I would uh, definitely... Uh, consider taking advantage of that even though I don't expect it to be a very high scoring game because neither team has done very well offensively they're both ranked pretty low and part of that is the Dolphins uh, offense without two obviously and without their uh, second quarterback uh, second string last week because he got hurt uh, in the middle of the game so again it's if you don't have a better option these are the sleepers The Niners, I feel safe. They've been a safe pick for me in one of my leagues, and they haven't gone in the negative, so if you don't have a better option, play the Niners. Now let's get into the worst matchups. So quarterback-wise, Anthony Richardson versus the Pittsburgh defense. Pittsburgh's number one versus quarterbacks. We know Pittsburgh knows how to play defense. And Anthony Richardson has had a better percentage throwing deep than he has throwing these short little uh, dinks or you know drops or like quick little throws to the running backs. That he's missing some of these easy throws. It's concerning fantasy wise and just as 
uh, a fan in general because he does not look like he did uh, last year before he got hurt. Uh, so yeah, I definitely sit him this week against Pittsburgh. Uh, he had a really good first game, 26.08 fantasy points, but then again, he's been going backwards. So uh, 9.86 and then 5.08, I definitely would not start him this week. As far as Jonathan Taylor goes, if you don't have any better option, just just play him. Don't expect any huge numbers, but it's tough again against the Pittsburgh uh, defense, number two against running backs. So uh, he's been consistent. He hasn't gone below uh, 10 fantasy points. So I expect him to get around like maybe 10-ish again. But still, this not the best. You might have better options uh, if you have Saquon Barkley instead play Saquon Barkley. So uh, definitely do that. And as far as uh, Garrett Wilson's concerned for wide receiver, I like him. He has not really been a huge contributor. It's been safe. His numbers, if obviously, if you drafted him high, you're disappointed. I personally didn't draft him high. I have him in this current league. Uh, but he hasn't hurt me yet. I'm 3-0. and But this week, I will not be starting him because... Uh, it, he is facing Patrick Sertan in the Denver defense, one of the best corners, arguably. This isn't a good matchup for him. He's still learning uh, how to play with Aaron Rodgers, so uh, sit him this week, definitely. Not a good matchup. Uh, Hunter Henry for the tight ends. I'd say versus San Francisco's defense, this is going to be tough. Hunter Henry has been more of a boom or bust tight end. I made the mistake of starting him last week and paid for it. Uh, San Francisco has been killing it, number one versus tight end, so I don't expect him to go off uh, in this game particularly. As you can see, he went 3.8, 18.9, and then back down to 2.9, so I would stay away from Hunter Henry this week. Uh, and as far as defenses, the Cardinals, their defense isn't that bad, but Washington's offense with Jaden Daniels just has been on a heater. So definitely would recommend that you uh, find a better option. I think they're projected to score like 2.6 fantasy points. So uh, you can definitely do better than that. That's the, literally dead last in uh, fantasy projections this week. So Definitely uh, find someone better. I know they haven't gone in the negative. It's been 8, 12, and 3. Again, the 12 was against the Rams, so I wouldn't read too much into that. Uh, and uh, so definitely uh, let me know what you think of this list. And uh, if you have any of these players that I say to start, I definitely recommend you start. And any of these that you say, well, you never know. I don't have a better option. I'm just going to play them. That's fine. You gotta just you know your roster. You gotta just play the best possible you have, even if it's a tough matchup. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, subscribe uh, if you enjoyed this video, and leave a like and a comment, and let me know what you think about this list. And I hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your day. Peace.